This video was brought to you by NordVPN. Considering that Boris Johnson resigned a few weeks ago, it's reasonable to wonder why he still resides in number 10. After all, since taking power in 2019, 60 members of his government resigned from office, many of them because they no longer had faith in his leadership. There is an argument, then, that he's a lame duck prime minister, someone who is known to be leaving soon and therefore has little to no authority to implement any new policies. In a period of calm, where the country is just sort of ticking over, this might be reasonable. The issue is, the country isn't just ticking over. Instead, it's beset by a wide range of crises that require urgent attention. We're facing a drought, spiralling inflation, huge energy bills and a heatwave. Surely now, more than ever, the Prime Minister should intervene and alleviate some of the pain this is causing families up and down the country. So where is he? Why is nothing being done? Why does the UK now have a leadership crisis? To understand exactly why this leadership crisis exists, we first need to understand a little about this summer's political timetable. While it may, at first glance, seem as though the leadership crisis is solely a problem caused by Boris Johnson, there are actually two different things feeding into it. Firstly, there is the parliamentary recess. Johnson resigned on the 7th of July, just 13 days before Parliament broke up for summer. Parliament will be on recess until the 5th of September, when the new Prime Minister will take office. During this time, MPs obviously don't meet to debate or pass any new laws. It's their summer holiday. In extenuating circumstances, the government can adjourn Parliament with the permission of the Speaker. The government would be reluctant to do so, though, as it would signal to the public that the current crises are serious enough to warrant an adjournment. It's also just not really standard practice to recall Parliament in such a way. This brings us on to the second issue feeding into the leadership crisis, the Tory leadership election. Even if Johnson's government did adjourn Parliament to try and pass some legislation in response to the crises, questions would be asked about whether he had the authority to do so. While he is technically the Prime Minister, his own government has demonstrated that they don't really have faith in him as leader anymore. There were even some calls from within the Conservative Party for him to leave office immediately and for Dominic Raab to be installed as caretaker Prime Minister. Now, perhaps his party could look past any of their previous differences with Johnson if the legislation he wanted them to pass was uncontroversial within the party itself. This isn't the case, though, as both Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak have very different plans for how to deal with the crises. On one hand, Sunak is a tax realist, meaning that he believes that cutting taxes right now will only make the situation worse. Truss, on the other hand, is more gung-ho when it comes to fiscal support and has made clear that she would be willing to cut taxes. So if Johnson was to implement some support package and Rishi wins, there'd be no guarantee that the support would remain. Or alternatively, if Truss wins, she may determine that Johnson's support didn't go far enough and subsequently change the levels of support. It should go without saying that this is far from ideal and would create unnecessary confusion, not something the country needs at all right now. So these are the factors that are probably making Johnson reluctant to act. Things didn't have to be this way though. The Conservative leadership race began in mid-July and won't be finished until early September. If this drawn-out process had been collapsed slightly, it's possible that the new Prime Minister could have drawn up plans to deal with the crises over summer. Failing this, the leadership candidates could have sat down together and met with Johnson to all agree on a common strategy for the crises. This is actually something that former Prime Minister Gordon Brown suggested that they should do. Brown's intervention actually brings us nicely onto the role the opposition has in all of this. While Johnson has demonstrably done little over summer, the opposition hasn't really done anything either. Starmer has been absent from media interviews and hasn't really offered a robust critique of Johnson's ineffective leadership over the summer. Starmer has been on holiday and at the Edinburgh Fringe lately, and it took him until this week to unveil Labour's policy to ease the cost of living crisis which is to freeze energy prices and increase tax on oil and gas companies. This is why some have joked that Gordon Brown actually became the leader of the opposition last week, 
is he was criticising the government and offered an alternative solution, which is exactly what Starmer should have been doing but didn't. So it seems that the country is facing not just a leadership crisis from the government, but also from the opposition. Throughout this video, we referenced the various crises that are affecting the UK. It's worth having a look into exactly why urgent economic help is actually necessary. The energy price cap is currently at £1,971 and is set to rise to over £5,000 by the end of 2023. The next rise is set to take place on the 1st of October. Inflation was at 9.4% in June and the Bank of England has warned that it could rise to 13% by the end of the year. The UK is currently experiencing a drought and hosepipe bans have been implemented by a number of water boards around the country. Things are set to get worse and people are already struggling. A Guardian article spoke to some people who are finding the cost of living crisis incredibly hard. One of these people, a hotel housekeeper called Kaylee, said in April that her monthly energy bill rose from £100 a month to £167, which is an increase of more than £800 a year. She said that she won't be able to pay the bill when it rises in October. Kaylee's experience will reflect that of many people in the UK, which is exactly why the Don't Pay UK campaign is gaining traction. The longer these problems go unaddressed, the more dissatisfied people will become and the more likely people will resort to simply not paying their bills. This is not something the government will want to happen, so it's in their interest to figure out a way to offer a plan sooner rather than later to keep the economy on track and prevent chaos like this. Because you can see how this may spin out of control. However, without a proper prime minister, government or even a clear opposition, it's a lot harder to imagine this resolving anytime soon. I mean, it does seem politicians are spending more time on holidays this summer than actually handling the impending winter crisis. While on those holidays though, they may experience a crisis of their own. The sites and services they rely on for work and pleasure might not work as expected. That's where a VPN comes in. NordVPN is far more than just a VPN which allows you to encrypt your web traffic. It's a full suite of tools to secure your digital life, from blocking malware and preventing malicious ad trackers to helping you set more secure passwords. And there's fun stuff too, because using NordVPN, you can access the internet through other countries, which means that region-locked content is available to you from anywhere. And as they have over 5,400 servers in 59 different countries, there's a lot of choice. So when you're at home, you can stream movies and films that aren't on your streaming services. And when you're away, you can still log in via your country, preventing all of your apps from freaking out and thinking that you're being hacked. So NordVPN really is an all-in-one security solution. And with the fastest connection of any VPN out there, Now's the time to get yourself protected. So if you sign up for a two year subscription using our link, you'll not only get a massive discount, but you'll also benefit from their 30 day free trial to give you some peace of mind while you find out how much you love it. Anyway, thanks for your support and thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring TLDR.